in the course before you get to the stage, where now it's just free. But yeah, this is you. We're here really just to sort of spread a bit of information about the proposal for a wind turbine to go up on the A606. Um, we feel that if we can get the information out there and just help people to understand a little bit more about the background to wind turbines, uh, they're more likely to understand that this isn't a project which is necessarily green. Uh, we still feel that there are much better alternatives uh, for providing green energy, certainly something which doesn't have the kind of impact on the landscape and the local people as this one would have. The committee came to see me yesterday at the surgery, quite a few people have written to me, and I, I said I would come along largely to have a look at the exhibition because the uh, one thing I wanted to be clear about, which I wasn't wholly clear obviously on paper, was exactly where this wind turbine was proposed to be uh, and to get a better idea of what exactly was causing all the control. Uh, let me begin by making clear it's not my decision and it's not actually the government's decision either. Uh, the key decision that has to be made is made by uh, the elected members of Rushcliffe Borough Council, which is the planning committee considering this application. So the fact that you've got four councillors uh, here uh, that I've met, you may have others coming, but I doubt it because you've got everybody covering the area and you've got the leader of the council as well, uh, is extremely relevant. Uh, I always say all planning applications, and normally with planning applications, I don't have anything to do with them. I'd make an absolute rule of saying, look, it's not my decision. It's no good saying you've come to persuade me, and if I don't agree with you, you're going to see the Prime Minister and after that the Pope. Uh, we, 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 we elect councillors to have this difficult task in sometimes very controversial decisions. Something has to be built somewhere. And they have the difficult task of deciding exactly where in the public interest these things should be cited. They're also influenced and have to follow planning rules and laws because otherwise every borough would have a totally different approach to everything and you'd have an extraordinary mess across the country. But Rushcliffe is an extremely good council. It's a very responsive council. And it has recently had the planning rules changed so they're actually enjoined to have regard to environmental and heritage considerations when they are considering uh, an application of this kind. And more and more of these applications are being rejected across the country where they're in unsuitable places. Now, uh, I've just been saying, I repeat to you what I've been saying to the people campaigning. Wind turbines are in themselves controversial as a source of energy. The whole climate change argument is less controversial than it was, but it still is a bit. I personally am not a climate change sceptic. I think you cannot reject 90% of the world's scientists because it happens to be inconvenient to you uh, to accept their advice. Uh, but I do think that in doing something to reduce our carbon emissions, we've got to do it in a sensible way. One thing, then, therefore, means that it should not be at a cost which closes down our economy. Uh, secondly that it should have regard to the impact of some of the novel forms of energy generation that are coming along. You must, uh, you know, our, our successive generations are going to be left with whatever we decide to put in in order to reduce our carbon reductions. And that is what is really relevant here. I, the argument about climate change and the arguments about uh, whether renewable energy is a good or a bad thing or whether wind turbines are a good or a bad thing will not, I regret to say, be settled by the planning application in Upper Broughton. There are, uh, the vehement debates will continue, I think, for some years to come. Uh, what matters here is the impact of this proposal and whether the downside of putting this wind turbine where is proposed outweighs the energy policy arguments for putting up more windmills. Now, as it happens, having already stressed that it's only my opinion, I think this is the kind of application which most disturbs me. I am actually an environmentalist. My friends t tease me that it's mainly because I'm a bird watcher, but I am a conservationist. I actually, my bird watching is an excuse to go to wild and beautiful places and enjoy the environment which we have a duty to protect. And I think the across the whole of Europe, including in the United Kingdom, 
some of the wildest and most beautiful landscapes uh, that we have have been virtually destroyed by putting up wind farms. But <laughs> objects, as is being pointed out, bigger than Trafalgar, Nelson's column in Trafalgar Square are being stuck in the middle of the landscape. So the relevant thing here, which is obviously brought, I'm not surprised, half of Leicestershire here, as well as my constituents, is that this one, if I've understood where it is, I'll look again, I'm familiar with this road, so I'll just, you know, driving back to West Bridgeford, I'll check again, it will be visible over a vast area of the Vale of Beaver. And I happen to think that the views from this ridge that runs to Hickling and the, the views generally, the landscape, the, 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 the general setting across the Vale of Beaver is one of the most beautiful sort of settings and gives some of the most beautiful views that we've got in this country. The Vale of Beaver is a little known, uh, I think, probably luckily for us, although I see we're trying to boost tourism. Uh, you won't get anything run here, but you will have a startling landmark. Uh, some people think they're beautiful and awe-inspiring. Well, you know, so is Nelson's Column, but you wouldn't put that in the middle of an otherwise unspoiled rural landscape visible over a vast area in a fairly dominant way. You'd put it in Trafalgar Square. Where you put this wind turbine, I'm not quite sure. I won't <laughs> suggest. But they, they don't remain silent. Uh, m most planning applications, people come to the MP when it's already been granted because they haven't bothered to take any part in the consultation. They haven't bothered to approach their borough councillor and give him or her their opinion. But now it's been allowed, they think someone should stop it. Uh, and that there I get quite emphatic that there is nothing I can do. Indeed, once they grant it, if they grant it, the borough council are not legally empowered to reopen it all and start saying, well, well, we'll have another look and see if we want to change our minds. They have to settle it. So that's, that's why all the borough councillors have come. That is why I'm here. And the one thing I can do is encourage all my constituents and the people who are equally affected all over the Melton constituency next door to get engaged and let people have your opinion because the planning rules expressly instruct the borough have regard to public opinion. To be fair, whether we need any wind farms at all or turbines in the Vale of Beaver is a pretty, at all, is a pretty big issue. And if you get one, they do breed a bit. Uh, it's almost impossible to turn down any more because there's a precedent and there's no logic in allowing one in the ridge between here and Hickling and then later deciding that one's fine, but two or three more don't matter. Uh, there are a lot of applicants who will come flooding along, if you're not careful, if you grant this one, deciding the Vale of Beaver is open season in the Vale of Beaver. So I've said, I've asked to say a few words. It's the effect of someone pointing a microphone at me, and uh, being a veteran politician, I've said quite a number. But I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and I, I will take an interest if you are opposed to this, what you're trying to do is persuade people that you're sensible, your arguments are right, and, and, and they, you, you, they, they want, they're decent people and you want people to agree with them. I think Ken Clark is a powerful man. He's on the, in the cabinet and um, he's a very sensible man and uh, you know, he made a, a brilliant speech just now pointing to people that they must stick to, to planning matters. It's, a, it's a, after all, just a planning matter, just not a house extension. It's a huge wind turbine. It's very uncomfortable that the church is involved in a project of this sort. Um, it does make it difficult because we innately trust that the, the church is going to be doing something for the benefit of the community. It's very difficult for the people who work for the church locally in the villages um, because they've had no kind of involvement in this project at all. Um, and yet they're having to take, the, um, take responsibility locally for what's a very unpopular project. I've got involved because um, the view that we have in Nether Broughton is going to be seriously affected by this proposed wind turbine by the Diocese of Southwark. Um, it's going to really dominate the landscape and particularly from our village it's going to be, have a massive impact on, on the beautiful views of the Vale of Beaver.
So a 220-foot wind turbine right up there on the escarpment is potentially going to be, the noise is going to be amplified throughout the Vale of Beaver. And we won't know if that happens until it's put up there. And that, I think, is actually really a huge potential hazard that we cannot quantify. And I, I'm, yes, it says over there, have a cup of coffee if you're shocked. I am shocked. It's great to see that there's a real change of tide in terms of people looking in more detail at these wind turbine projects and deciding what's effective technology and what isn't effective. So it's great to see those changes coming into place. The subsidies have to go. It has to be a lot of letters. And I think, quite frankly, um, if we don't do this in the next two weeks, this thing could go up. I think the great thing is, is that now everybody's starting to group together. Uh, we're all sharing information. There's the website Voices Against Turbines. And I've, I've spoken to quite a lot of people today that have got applications all the way across. Um, and everybody is absolutely marvellous. And we're saying, yes, we've done this, yes, try that. Uh, and it's working incredibly well. It's marvellous. So why are we going to blight this beautiful area for the sake of energy which will, will be generated intermittently because the wind doesn't blow all the time. The figures they have produced are very misleading. They're producing figures that say we're going to generate all this energy and that's only if the wind is blowing continuously. It's, it, those administrative boundaries and political boundaries make the whole thing extremely difficult. Um, somebody objecting to this particular project potentially has to write almost a dozen letters to cover all the various people that are being consulted. Um, so it, it is hugely difficult. Well, can you imagine that? Wind turbines all around the high points and even lower. Um, in the Vale of Beaver, it would look, it would look just awful. It just, I mean, this is a rural, peaceful, beautiful area, and they shouldn't be blighted by these uh, metal machines. They are, after all, industrial machines.